All right, welcome to another episode of Power of Bourbon. Uh, tonight we are just doing not a blind off or anything else. We're just doing a single review on a little bit of a unicorn bottle, uh, but something people are hunting, especially with a recent release uh, in Tennessee, and that is the Coy Hill special release from Jack Daniels this year. So we reviewed this, TJ, feel free to link that video. Um, we actually kind of had this a little bit ago on a blind flight that we paired with some other things. Uh, and we just thought it was worth a single review knowing that Jack Daniels has recently actually released these within the state of the Tennessee um, in the 375 bottles, uh, not the 750. Yep. And also, honestly, these are floating around the secondary market like crazy. Um, I know my local secondary market is posting these. So we on this channel are not a huge fan of the secondary market um, simply because it gets bought and then stuffed on a shelf and never drank by all these collectors. Uh, we are not collectors on this channel. We are drinkers on this channel. It should be opened. It should be shared and it should be enjoyed. Um, but that being said, would, is this worth the 450 or 500 on the secondary market? We're going to give you our thoughts tonight. Yeah, and so interesting. So uh, I think the first batch they ran in the fall was, I think, maxed out around 145 proof. Mine's 142. Uh, the, the 375 release they recently did, I think they actually have some that are 148 proof. Yeah, they're, um, they're way up there. So. so, And I will say props to Jack Daniels for lowering the bottle size so more people can get it. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head what the price of the 375s are. It's probably the normal price of a 750, like Old Foe is doing with their 117 series, but it allows more people to get it. And I am a fan of that. Uh, more people being able to try this bourbon is a good thing. So I do kind of hate that it was only released in Tennessee, but yeah. you know, quantity wise, that might have been kind of why they did that. So, so I get a oak on the nose for sure and cherry cola oak oh, nice oak cherry cola I, I can go with this yeah i mean oak cherry cola on the nose and the, for me i love everything about this um spoiler alert i've had a little bit of it and <laughs> i love everything about it the you get the cherry cola on the nose you get the oak but i this I don't often describe this note, but the molasses you get, you, I mean, I haven't tasted yet. I just know it. You get it on the palate and I feel like you get it on the nose and it's just unique and delicious. I mean, if all Jack products are like this, there would be no stigma of Jack is bad. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, th this is definitely one of the things where it's like, you know, if you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to get a Jack Daniels special. I mean, this was like, you know, hundred close to 100 bucks. Uh, no, like the Jack Daniels special releases in their rye release last year, I had the privilege of tasting. A friend got it. it was phenomenal. So in general, if you have the opportunity, and I don't know how long they're continuing these special releases, um, but if you have the opportunity for one of these Jack Daniels special releases based on the rye I had last year, the Koi Hill release this year. This is a must get. If you get it close to MSRP, I would even say, I don't know, maybe even 50% above MSRP. Like, I feel like at 150, I would still be happy with this bottle potentially. That might be the uh, highest Brian has ever gone. Yeah, yeah exactly. might be the highest. I, I love everything about this bottle. But yeah, like 125 is still a no brainer. For me well, there it is. There's a review, folks. We'll just end this episode yep. now. And, uh, it was great. It Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good night. When we tasted this before, I was mm. early contender for whiskey of the year, to which Brian said, "I'm not going to send it." Yeah. Um. <laughs> so it won't be whiskey of the year. Um. Which we'll we'll, we'll see if it lasts. His it loss. Maybe we, maybe we need to tie some incentive to the. You know, <laughs> you win whiskey of the year, then you get a bottle of Old Carter that I'll drink a third of. Um, 
and you'll get it in three years. To me, what's interesting about this is this highlights the differences. Like they didn't do anything. In, they, it's not like they entered the barrel at a higher proof. This just highlights the the variation that you get in weather conditions, in rickhouse placement, and it's just like this one little knoll creates the this rickhouse creates these whiskeys that are really high proof. Yeah, and it's been doing this forever. And Jack Daniels has just been only recently been, you know, creating this Coy Hill release to highlight this this uniqueness. Before that, yeah. either they were just discarding barrels or they were blending them with others to get them within standard for their yeah. barrel proof or their you know proofing them down to the, just their standard offerings. Jack's having so I think yeah. that to me is just like the the cool portion of what this whiskey is is just it highlights this uniqueness of. This under like previously unexplored, at least to uh, like to the common folk, to the people in the market. Obviously, you know, master distillers knew this for a long time. People within the companies, um, but it's great to bring this to the to the masses. Or yeah, yeah, a few select uh, some select few yeah. lucky patrons yeah. that yeah they get to buy. And this. Jack Daniels, I just double checked. They describe it as these barrels in. I mean, there's not a lot of this floating around. Right. Um, mine from Barrel House 13 compared to eight. Those are the only two these are coming from. And these are in the Buzzard's Roost, uh, which I assume by that is the highest level of the yep. rick houses. And so, I mean, you're talking about crazy, probably fluctuations in temperature, humidity um, at those levels. And so, yeah, I mean, I, my heart's almost breaking for like, how long have they had this stuff that they've just disseminated into like yeah, they just proofed it down. something else <laughs> like oh my gosh like tell me no yeah <laughs> but the market wasn't ready right i mean we've uh, yeah, third bourbon market 30 years ago would have just let you would, if they brought this out it would have just sat on the shelf so we're one of those channels that does a review and never never actually gives tasting notes i know right i was afraid of that too and so but the complexity of this is so much more significant, I feel like, than obtainium or something else high proof. Even in the nose, I feel like I get the flavors. Plus in the nose, I get like, I can tell it's hot. I feel like... Oh, that's not as, 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 as yeah. It's getting you. <laughs> and, but it's weird because then the rest of it, like the nose tells me it's hotter than it tastes. Now I feel it in my belly when I drink it. I know oh, it's yeah. 142 proof when it comes on down in the belly but the nose i get the flavors plus i get that hint of like okay this is bringing something uh that i really like it, it almost gives me like this tease towards the finish and you guys know I'm, I'm the finish guy like yeah i love a good finish and when i smell this nose i just go oh my gosh what's coming that's what i, mean, I get excited about on this. yeah i mean i think it's a it's a great I'm going to, I'm going to go there. I'm going to do it. It's a great bourbon. Uh, even though it's <laughs> Tennessee whiskey, it's a great bourbon, but it's a three note bourbon. There's like three, maybe four notes. It's not overly complex. Hey, complexity doesn't always like complexity is a good nope. thing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if those three notes are really good, let's not diminish no, what those three notes right. are. No, I will I will give you that. The three notes are amazing. They do a great job. Maybe we'll go four notes. Anyway, what they the the notes they went for are great. They did amazing. There if you, you want me to pay secondary, I want like 15 notes. Oh, I want I a symphony. <laughs> I want amazingness. I want to be like taken on a journey. And this, like what I smell is what I get in the palette, is what I get in the finish. It's great but it's not overly complex and that doesn't like, I think we can establish something on this channel that we don't believe anything is secondary. Uh, we haven't had a William Lou Weller. That might be the one. But if I were willing to pay secondary, I would have a William Lou Weller. Fair enough. Valid point. So I think that's like, I like the question that you posed earlier. But honestly, I don't think that's like, that's not what we're talking about here. We're, yeah. We're and rate it for what it is at MSRP or a little above, not secondary. 
Yeah. So we've talked a lot about the the nose and how we get the the cherry cola. We get the the, the smoke. We get the especially in my mind. I feel like you get like some molasses in there. The palate that transitions. I feel like you get this nice Dr Pepper cherry cola palate that is delicious and. I feel like the molasses is there, but it goes away a little bit. And I start to get a little bit more of the, uh, the, the oak and, and then towards the, towards the, 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 the end of the palate, I get some spice. Yeah. So for me, the palate is all cherry and oak. And I, and I think honestly, TJ, we haven't talked about this bourbon in this way before. Bourbon. Um, but oh, it is, you know, it is a, it is a maybe a, it maybe it is a three or four trick pony, but it does those three or four tricks really, really well. So, so here I think is this is the comparison. So you, TJ, you pose the secondary question to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna pose this question. So this is a, you know, once a year release for Jack Daniels. So let's look at the other distilleries and say. Would you take this over last year's little book? Would you take this over yes. or uh Brian? Hang on. Sorry. Okay. I'm building up here and then you just ruin Calm it. Calm it down. Would you take this? Or I know Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is um, you know, there's three of them as of last year, sometimes four. Um would you take this over makers finishing series? Would you take this over? I old full birthday bourbon like i haven't had that enough i don't get yeah. that regularly enough to be able to make that decision um the ones i've had have been wonderful um so that that's the category of this bourbon to me so i guess with that caveat or with that context go so in response to your your question there chuck uh so i'm Let's willing say you i'm willing to buy this limited release over just about any other limited release except the Elijah Craig Barrel Bruce because that hits my vanilla butterscotch flavor profile. This does not. But when you look at other things, like I'm even going to go out there and I'm going to, what you, you talked about, birthday bourbon. This to me is better than some of the birthday bourbons I've tried. Uh, and multiple people agree that the Koi Hills all hit the same flavor profile where the birthday bourbons ebb and wane and everything like that. So you're getting, I compare it much more to the Elijah Craig. You know what you're going to get. It is going to be this flavor profile. It's going to hit these things about right. There's going to be a little variation, but not much. So yeah. So I, I I'd probably put it as a, a top four. If you're going to hunt something for the year, this is probably in that list of a must have. Yeah. So a word Chuck mentioned earlier, rich, everything about the flavor, like, yes. Like I think TJ, you hit it on the nose. Like this is a three or four trick pony. It doesn't offer complexity, but what it does offer, it offers incredibly well. And Chuck used the word, it comes off rich. Like, all the flavors here, they come at you. They come at you rich. The flavors aren't, there's not complexity of flavors, but the flavors you do come across. The, the cherry note, the molasses note, the oak note, the smoke note, like you, they, they are just there and they are compl- like, they are so good for what they are. Um, I'm not sure. And again, it has a strong, it has a solid finish, which I of course love. Um, it has that, knows that teases towards a solid finish i mean i i would be hard pressed at that 400 to 500 dollars secondary price like I, i've had weller foolproof no 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 compared to this like if you want to tater hunt sure go buy your weller foolproof and be disappointed and or better yet put it on the shelf and never open it along with the other 12 you have you know this don't get this to keep on the shelf. Get this to open and appreciate and drink. Yeah, well, a foolproof drink it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. 
right? I mean, Willow Fuller is um, pretty freaking good. I don't, I mean, oh, yeah. Call me a tater. Oh, 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 it is. Call me a tater all day long. I'm it fine. is, but this, I feel like, is just better. If I can sum it up, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, if you get a chance to buy this, and I, I feel personally at 150 or less, it's a must. Now, the 375 will be a little bit different. Uh, but the 750 at 150 or less, I would say for 375, 100 or less. Uh, and you don't have one, definitely do it. But make sure you open it, make sure you drink it, and make sure you share it with friends. Like that's the best thing. As much fun as having all these bottles are and drinking them, it's a thousand times better when you do it with friends. Bring people over, have fun, explore. It's worth it. And you should have it on your shelf. Is it like go cra- crazy, spend four or five hundred dollars on the secondary? No. But if you're gonna spend four or five hundred on the secondary because you're that person, this might like this might right. be the four or five hundred. Not advocating it. that. Yeah, I not was advocating say. that. But if if you're going to, this might be the responsible way to do it. But yeah. Uh, let us know what you think. If you found one, have you actually popped it? I hope you have. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Power burn.